stampers. Today I'm going to be doing a video using some of the new products from our new mini catalog that's coming out in January of 2012. Um, and um, they have some really awesome things now that are coming out. Um, for instance, there are these things called framelits that you can actually go ahead and use your Big Shot and get these beautiful framed images for your cards and cut out the inserts and everything. So that's an awesome product that I love. And the stamp sets are absolutely beautiful. So we're going to go ahead and make this card today. And I'll show you how I actually did the framelits um, so you have an idea of how to use them. Um, so first thing that we're going to do is take a piece of Whisper White cardstock. And this is cut 8.5 by 5.5 and just scored it four and a quarter. So this is going to be the base of our card. I also have a piece of Wisteria Wonder, uh, which is cut four and a quarter by four. And I've already run this through the Big Shot machine using our embossing folder uh, Perfect Polka Dots, which um, I know I've done this on other videos before, but basically you just put the embossing folder, the paper inside the embossing folder, and run it through your Big Shot, and that's how you get these polka dots on there. This is my favorite one. I have worn this out to the nibs. Um, but anyway, so we're going to go ahead and be using this as our, our part of our base of our card. The other paper that I've used today is called Twitter Pated. And I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but again, this is one of the new um, designer series papers that's in the mini catalog. Love it. Gorgeous colors. Um, it actually has um, a lot of different patterns in here. Really beautiful. And some of them really um, striking floral patterns, too. So um, this is a, one of the newer papers that they came out with. So we're going to be using the green. It's kind of a basket weave paper. And um, that's going to be for the, the center uh, part of the card. And then um, we're going to go ahead and use one of the uh, Whisper White pieces of cardstock and stamp our image on there. And that, again, is going to be one of our new stamp sets. So the one that I'm going to be using it from, this is called Apothecary Art, and there's actually two boxes of these um, stamps in here. Um, and this is the one we're going to be using today. So the first thing that we're going to do is take our Stays on Black ink and go ahead and ink up the stamp. And if you're having problems with your clear stamps, I know some of you were kind of complaining that they don't always stick on your acrylic blocks. Um, make sure that your acrylic blocks is real clean. I actually used my Stampin' Mist and a little microfiber um, cloth, and I cleaned the block real well because this even gets oils from your fingers on there, plus glue and dyes and all that stuff. So clean that off, and you also want to clean off the top of the stamp itself, um, you know, so that it, it has a really good adhesion to it. And I usually don't have any problems if I do that. So we're going to go ahead and ink this up. Actually, since it's such a big stamp, I'm going to ink it up from this side so I can see better what I'm doing. And um, you want to get a real nice coat of the black ink on there, of course. And we'll go ahead and stamp that down on our Whisper White paper. There we go. So that's a real nice image we've got there now. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stamp our saying on here, which is for another new set. Um, and it's called Loving Thoughts, which is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I love the way the capital letter is real um, screwy, and I love that. It looks so pretty. And again, we're going to use the, uh, the stays on ink, the black stays on ink. So we'll go ahead and ink that up, and we'll just go ahead and put that right up in the corner here. So I'm using the words Day to Dr Dare to Dream today, So because I think that's very appropriate for the new coming year, so we are going to dare to dream um, yeah, so this is awesome. So what we're going to do now is we'll go ahead and start coloring in, and then I'll show you how to use the framelits. I'm going to be using Old Olive for the leaves, and I'm just going to be squishing the top of the, the stamp pad against the top so we can get our palette going here. And I'm going to be using a blender pen for this. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll color in all our leaves and get that going. You can also use the aqua painter to do this um, and it goes really quickly if you do that as well. So, but we'll just kind of, I'll show you how I, how I usually do things and give you an idea. Um, there's multiple ways. If you want to get this darker, then you just take your blender pen and put it into the pad itself and you can get some darker leaves in there too. So just to kind of give you some options. So we'll go ahead and color this in. 
I apologize, I know this is going to take a little longer by doing this, but I want to show you some different options of how to color in these things because a lot of people say, oh, I'm not that talented, I can't do it, I, I don't know how to you know, color things. Hey, you honestly don't have to be very talented. I am not um, a master painter by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I just kind of follow the lines and just like when you were a little girl and... You know, you don't go outside the lines very much, and even if you do, you know what? It's homemade, and that's part of the beauty of some of these things that we do. And um, so don't don't feel like you have to be perfect in any way. I mean, that's part of the beauty of the card. So we've got most of our green colored in. If we have to come back and we'll do a little bit more, then we'll do a little bit more. But we'll get on to the colors now. So we'll close this one up here. And um, the next thing that I'll show you, an, a little different method, is using the Aqua Painter. And this is filled with water, and it does get very, very moist, so you, you don't want a lot of water that's pouring out of that, or your image is going to get kind of um, blotchy looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple of the Stampin' Write markers, and I'm using the thicker end, and you can actually take your aqua painter, take off some of the paint from the thicker end, and go ahead and paint in. This gives you a very, very light colored image, or um, colored flower, I should say. So we're just going to do a few of them that way. Now, if that's not dark enough for you, you can go back and use your blender pen and fill in just a little bit more, like the centers of the flowers, for instance. And that'll give it more of a, uh, of a darker look. So I'll show you how to do that as well. We'll just do a couple more of these flowers here. There we go. Maybe just one more over here. Okay, perfect. And then what we'll do is um, I'll take my blender pen, which is a much harder pen, and then just go back and do some of the centers of these, just to give it a little bit more shadowing. So you have some ideas of how to do different things there. Okay, then I'm, I'll put this one away, and we'll go ahead and use the Pacific Point. This is a really, really dark blue. It's absolutely beautiful color, though. So we'll kind of clean off our aqua painter a little bit and go back and fill in these colors. And this is a really rich, deep color, so I would suggest just using the aqua painter rather than just using your stamp and write marker. But, you know, that's all in your own taste. If, if you feel like you want that dark of a color in there, then, then you go. You go, girl. So, yeah. So we're almost done coloring in our flowers. I see I missed a couple leaves, so I'll go back and just fill those in in just a minute. Um, again, no worries. Some of these are pretty intricate patterns. If you, if you see that you've missed something, eh, you know, just go back and do it again. It's no big deal. So, again, I'm just going to touch on some of the centers of some of these just to give them a little more depth with the Pacific Point. And, you know, you don't want that real wet. Like I said, just kind of wipe it off on your mat. Um, so I'm going to go back and just fill in a couple of the leaves a little bit more, and then we'll be done with this project of painting it in, coloring it in. So... Again, just kind of wipe off your brush. Okay, and I think that pretty much does that. Alrighty, so we've got all those colored in. So we'll close everything up here. And then I'm going to show you how to use the framelits, which is, oh my gosh, so fun. I was so happy when they came out with these. So first thing, I'm just going to kind of cut off this part here because I don't want to cut um, into my dare to dream just yet. So we're just going to cut that off a little bit. I'm going to take one of my framelits, and this comes with six different sizes in here. And one side has kind of a cutting edge, a raised edge. That's actually the cutting edge, and then the other side is smooth. So you'll be able to see the differences. You can stack these one on top of each other um, to get like inside cuts and they all match perfectly. The framelits right now, they just come in this particular um, size, which is like an oval framelit, and um, it actually is called the Labels Collection. Um, but they also have hearts, which I don't have, but the hearts are really pretty, and again, they just stack one on top of another. So we're going to be using this uh, framelit today that actually matches this set perfectly. And again, I'm looking to see, make sure I've got the cut edge down, the cutting edge down, which is the raised edge, and you're just going to place it on there and get it close. Get my uh, Big Shot machine out, and we've got it right here. And because this is such a flat die, you need to use 
your entire block. So I didn't even have any of the tabs turned. It's just we're going to set it right on top. And actually, I need to put an acrylic plate down first. We do need a lot of thickness here. Then we're going to go ahead and place our paper down, our framelit, and another acrylic block, and run it through the Big Shot. And again, this just takes a, a second or so. And what you've got then is your image, your beautiful image, cut out perfectly instead of trying to do it with the scissors. So we're, we're going to cut out that one. We're also going to take our Twitter painted paper and we're going to use the next size up. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to place the raised side down, which is the cutting side. Put our paper right in here. Put our acrylic block on top of that again and just cut this one. And this is going to be our outside of our oval cut. Alrighty, so we've got this one cut and then I'll get this out of our way so you can see what I've done. So now we've got this one cut and then you can also use the inside of this on another project. So don't throw those little scraps away, girls. So now we've got this done and then this is going to layer right on top of it. Look at how beautiful that is. So, so we'll st kind of start putting our card together. The only other thing we need to do yet is we're going to go ahead and cut out our Dare to Dream. And I'm just going to cut this by hand to save a little time right now, but certainly feel free to use your, your cutting devices and things if you want to get this perfect. Again, sometimes the beauty of these things is not being perfect. I just went ahead and did a little, little tail on the end here. And just to give it a little bit more character. And then we'll use a little bit of crumb cake to go around the edges. And we've almost had this done. I'm going to use the stamping sponge for that. A little crumb cake. And we'll just kind of go around the edges of both of our stamped pieces. There we go. That one's done. We'll take this one and do the same thing. And by now, most of these inks and everything have dried. Just make sure that everything is pretty dry before you go ahead and sponging around it because you really don't want to smear your project. Um, and sometimes with those aqua painters, things do take a little bit more time to dry, just so you know. So we've got all that done. Now we're going to go ahead and adhere this together. I've used a couple little Stampin' Dimensionals to put my Dare to Dream down, so we'll go ahead and use those. And again, ladies, nothing goes to waste. I use this entire piece of Stampin' Dimensionals. Those little tiny pieces are great for adhering small projects, so don't ever throw out your little pieces there. And we'll go ahead and set this down right in the center there. This looks beautiful. Then as far as layering this piece, I'm going to use a little bit of snail around the outside. And I'm really big on using the snail for flat pieces and things like that, so it makes life very simple. So we've got that piece layered down. Now the actual base of our card, our Whisper White, I'm actually going to use some um, liquid adhesive, and you can use liquid Tombow if you like. Um, I also like to use the 3-in-1, which Stampin' Up! sadly does not sell. I wish they did. Um, but this is an awesome glue. Um, it's just from the, the local craft store. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down, especially when you have anything that has dimension to it that you've used embossing folder with. I think the liquid Tombow or the 3-in-1 is the best thing to adhere things to your cards. So we're going to go ahead and set that right down there. And then we're going to also adhere this piece, same thing, with a little bit of 3-in-1 glue or liquid Tombow. And this fits perfectly on here. And then the last little final touch that I did is I took a little piece of pool party um, ribbon, the ruffled ribbon, and I just went ahead and tied it in a knot. So real simple to do. Don't have to tie bows or any of that stuff. I always like that. And um, we'll take a little glue dot. And we'll just adhere that to the back. And again, with your glue dots, always make sure that you're just taking your object, placing it on top of the glue dot. I know this is almost impossible to see on camera. Place it right on the glue dot. Don't try to take it off of that paper. And then just place it down on your project. That way you don't have to get messy fingers either. And that's all there is to it. We'll just trim the ribbon just slightly and 
you are good to go. So another beautiful, beautiful project. Nice stamp set that Stampin' Up! has offered. Thank you so much for watching me. Have a great day. Bye-bye.